one of the most dramatic stories in piano manufacturing. Whatever happened to Young Chang? And what is the state of the brand today? Today, we take an in-depth look at Young Chang pianos. Hi, this is Ted with Alamo Music Center in beautiful downtown San Antonio, Texas. I'm Patrick Marr. You can find us online at alamomusic.com. If you haven't already, please subscribe to our YouTube channels, check out our other videos, sign up for notifications, leave us comments, like our videos. We really appreciate your guys' support. It means a lot, and we love to bring you guys content. Um, and really excited for this one today, Ted. I, I know we've done a couple videos in this series where it's Focusing, kind of the spotlight is on... A like Baldwin, and, yeah. and then uh, the other one we did. We did Pearl River. Uh, Pearl River. Is Pearl River a good piano? Is Baldwin, whatever happened to Baldwin? And this one, I feel like, kind of falls right between those two subjects. It's, uh, it's about a piano manufacturer that a lot of people are familiar with. I would say if you've looked at used pianos, if you've looked, um, if you've followed history of pianos, you've probably seen information about Young Chang and read varying reviews of, oh, it's great quality, it's good quality, it's bad quality, it's depending on the year. There's a whole bunch of information out there. Um, and because it is a manufacturer that's been around for a good amount of time now, um, there's a lot of used products out there and a lot of these products around America in a lot of different places where people were Young Chang dealers and there were Yamaha dealers and there were Steinway dealers. Um, and you just, you see a lot of it. And so we wanted to uncover Young Chang, kind of lift the veil back and say, this is who they are as a company. This is where they came from. Uh, and so, Ted, the history of, of Young Chang, I know you were, you were looking up some of the stuff recently. I always like to start off with a personalized thing, okay? And, and with Young Chang, my first association with the piano was later on in, in the company's history, and it was with one of their larger grand pianos. Okay. So... That just means I had a wonderful experience with with the young Chang. So you band. remember playing? I it. remember playing it, and and I was really impressed. What year? Do you remember? This was probably sometime in the late '90s, somewhere okay. around in the '90s, mid to late '90s. I'm thinking that I played a, a, a nine foot young Chang, and I'm trying was to remember where it was. It may have been. I think it was a Pramberger or model. Designed and that by was the Pramberger. first one. That, the first time that Young Chang really grabbed a lot of attention was with that top of the line Pramberger model. And so, yeah, I mean, kind of jumping right into it, Young Chang had developed pianos for a long time in the fifties, um, or started in 1956. Um, there's some rich history there with Yamaha. You know, for the longest time, I always thought that they were. Um, and then when I started checking, I, it's mm -hmm. almost like Young Chang has this really neat history because they were almost like a subsidiary of Yamaha. Yeah. Except that these three brothers that started it took it upon themselves to import and sell Yamaha pianos into Korea. Mm -hmm. So much so that they got tired of giving profits to Yamaha and started realizing. Yeah. They thought they could do it themselves. They do it themselves and because Yamaha had them they set up a factory and they first started off cutting keys mm -hmm. and then it goes to trying to make Rims and ca cases naturally for vertical pianos one of the easiest things to get into the piano business mm -hmm. That's one of the things that was always localized when you bought a piano 150 years ago You buy 10 pianos you got 10 soundboards 10 frames enough action and strings to make 10 pianos and you had to get the casing materials Locally, mm -hmm. that's why sometimes every now and then in this store you'll find an old old piano that's got mesquite It's like it's made out of mesquite and that's because they Harvested mesquite wood for the sides. From here in Texas? The, for, yeah. Oh, wow. So, so you do see a lot of those. But those core components were manufactured a lot in Chicago. And in much the same way. That's that, what Yamaha was doing. They were the, sending they almost were sending complete. The almost completed pianos. And see how you guys do putting these together. So for a long time, they were assembling. And then they started getting into key cutting and then mm -hmm. action components. And it was... And it was I think a dual effort to also save on import taxes because they're able to manufacture in Korea. Well, it got the attention of the Korean government because they said, you're building and you're manufacturing something and no profits are coming into this country. Mm -hmm. All the stuff you're building and selling is getting built and sold under a different you Yeah, know, different and, so, and so there um, there we go with some dr drama right there to, at the very beginning of Young Chang's history. Not only that, but... They started to slowly take over more and more of the responsibilities of building the piano. And they, like you said, said, hey, we don't need you, Yamaha. They were a primary subcontractor of Yamaha. And then 
they actually went into business with Yamaha for mm -hmm. a while. They had this like almost nine or ten year deal, mm -hmm. and then after that, they said, "You know what? We're our own guys. We're, we're going to build gonna, our own we're factory. We're going to compete worldwide." Yeah. Mm -hmm. And so yeah, so Young Chang started to take get momentum in the '60s and '70s, um, and entered the U.S. market. Um, and I know there was drama there too. The drama come. You know, it's kind of interesting because we had talked about the Asian um, import grand pianos that were the first to feature the extremely shiny gloss finish. Mm -hmm. And it wasn't until the late 90s, like in 1998, that we actually had a U.S. company that could manufacture the polyurethane finishes like that. Mm -hmm. uh, prior to that, they were coming out of... Um, They're satin. J j yeah, they were satin. And then uh, but the only ones that were coming in that were polyurethane were either Japanese, Chinese, or Korean-made. Mm -hmm. And the other thing that I failed to mention is in some of the other videos, what's really important about in the mid 80s when you start getting a lot of imported grand pianos is not only are they extremely affordable and they look great, they play fine and they sound fine, but there's one thing, a little subtle difference is that every single one of those Korean made or Japanese or Chinese made imported pianos had is they had international key length. Oh. And at that time, if you bought a Baldwin or a Kimball or a Steinway grand piano, you had the shorter keys. And the first time a player walks up to a keyboard that has international keys, it just looks like there's a lot of breathing room in there. I mean, yeah. a little sliver of an inch makes a huge difference on a keyboard. Mm -hmm. And it lowers, it actually makes it look like the black keys are not as high and ah. as intimidating because they're actually longer and they're stretched out. And the same thing with the white keys. Okay. So when you're looking at a keyboard, and this really started in the mid 80s, and then it got to the point to where when I first came to work here in the late 90s, people were not buying a Baldwin US made manufactured grand piano because it didn't have the international key length right on key it. Length it didn't on have it. the right key length that's, on it. That's and that's a critical right. component because the only pianos that had international key length at that time that you would find in the United States were the expensive models. The very expensive mm -hmm. models. So these pianos come in, they're shiny, they got long keys, and they play and sound fine. And they're affordable. And they're, and they're very affordable. Yeah, and so you, so Young Chang enters the market. I remember there was drama between the the name was associated with Yamaha. I don't know if it was because they had that agreement or or where the association came from. People saw the Y, they saw the piano, and they. I think it's the logo too. And the, the logo, the, the, yeah, the logo it, it has almost they, like a tuning fork. It does have a tuning it, it, fork. It does have a tuning um, fork for a Y. Or I know there was some. I don't know if there was lawsuits that ever went, were in place, but there was definitely behind the scenes a lot of fighting in and between these companies that say, "Hey, like the, you can't represent yourself as part of Yamaha or even looking like Yamaha." And so you know, these are comp these are big companies making similar products. Um, and competing with each other in the U.S. market, and I remember there was just drama there. And so it, it's kind of funny to, to look at Young Cheng now, look at where it falls almost in the pecking order of things. Yamaha is this, and, and what the, the statistic is, one out of every four instruments made in the world are that's Yamaha. It. Right. And so, and that's across all instruments. Um, so just a humongous company. And these other companies, Kawhi, Steinway, um, Baldwin at the time, these. Uh, Samic too. So Samic is is kind of the main competitor, I would say, of Young Chang, and it's because they're right there next to each other in in Korea. Um, and Samic started taking a good chunk of their market as well from Young Chang. Yeah. Samic. I mean, the, I've played a seven and nine foot large Samics, and they're they're nice pianos yeah. too. Yeah. And so Samic is uh, kind of was built for growth, I would say, and they really took took momentum out of Korea and started, and, and at this point they own parts of Steinway, um, like percentage wise, and, and it's just a really neat story to see these two companies come out of Korea, and th it's like the same story as Yamaha and Kawhi, where there's these two companies out of a smaller country right. that's manufacturing great instruments, and uh, Young Chang has ties to a lot of these different brands, um, and so they made four... Uh, Baldwin, they made the Wurlitzer. Right. Um, and when the Essex line came out for Steinway, they made the Essex line. So this is a great quality instrument um, as far as a history. And when you see used young chains pop, pop up, they are sought after because they're affordable. They've they've probably not been played that much in the houses they've right. been in. They've been traded in for a bigger, better instrument, um, but definitely been taken care of. And we see a lot of them come into our store. 
Uh, the, most of the older ones that, that uh, had some negativity associated with them, the pianos from the 60s and 70s, have pretty much been filtered out of the market. Mm -hmm. The ones that are around the Young Changs are primarily going to be right around the Pramberger years. And it's important to realize that a lot of those criticisms from Young Chang's first uh, entry line in, into the U.S. market pianos, though uh, there were problems associated with the scale design. Uh, and some problems associated with, with the materials and the layout mm -hmm. of just the math of the piano. So when Pramberger came along, he actually changed every single one of those models. They were all altered just enough to make them closer to a perfect musical instrument. Yeah, and so, and so, then, and so Pramberger, Joseph Pramberger, was hired uh, in 1995-ish area of uh, for Young Chang. But where did he come from? He came from Steinway and Sons. So. Right. So this guy was, I think he was the head of, was of a, development, basic of. So he was the vice, he was the vice president at Steinway, head of manufacturing or or development or or one of those very like, he was the top guy at well, Steinway. You don't read about too many people that have quote unquote a degree in piano engineering because mm -hmm. there really isn't such a thing. You don't go and get a degree in piano engineering, but there is a lot of math and uh, associated production engineering with building a piano. Yeah. It's sound engineering. It's it's it's, it's studying a lot all of things, but yeah, materials and then manufacturing mm -hmm. and uh, assembly line. And here's here he is working for Steinway, and every day he sees Steinway and Sons right there, and he sees the the impact that Steinway has on the world, and how Steinway, Harry Steinway, Henry Steinway had an idea, and built this brand. And what does he do? He goes to Young Chang, he signs with them, and creates a Pramberger line. And his name was on a lot of Young Chang's. The 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 more expensive ones, he, the Pramberger series, um, is is shown on there, and some of them are even branded with Pramberger right. on the, on the fall board. Um, and so he was he was trying to make a statement. He, he was like, "I'm here. I'm good at what I do. I want to make a statement with this company." Um, and Young Chang took steps. They they invested in a, a huge facility in China. They were one of the first companies to say, "Hey, we're going to pour money into China. We're going to hire this guy from Steinway. We're going to push in this direction." Um, so where did it all go wrong? Well, uh, I think what went wrong is that other piano manufacturers caught on to their, that little bit of competitive edge mm -hmm. that they had with that Chinese facility because you have to remember, Young Chang is one of the very first to heavily invest into the Chinese manufacturing market for mm -hmm. pianos. Yeah. They're one of the first guys there, so much so that the Pearl River Group was like, hey, we need a new factory. We got foreigners are coming in here and building a new factory in our place, and we don't even have one. So that's when Pearl River partnered with Yamaha. Partnered with Yamaha and uh -huh. built their plant. And it takes a couple of years before the consistency and the quality of of these merger type things like Pramberger with Young Chang. But immediately the Prambergers started showing up in music schools, in in smaller universities, and 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 colleges, even in some European schools. Those Prambergers were that sought after, primarily because. Action, sound, and price. They yeah, could, the price. You could put a lot of those those pianos into the practice rooms. Now, what went wrong is that other piano manufacturers perfected the idea that Young Chang was after with mm -hmm. the Chinese market. Yeah, and so I mean, you look at today, and so what happened shortly after? They had to for for there's there's a couple different speculations, but. Young Chang had to evacuate from China, basically, and say, "Hey, we got to move back to Korea." Now there was there was issues, and they lost a whole bunch of production time. They lost; it was a huge hiccup for them. And these other companies did step in, and we're talking about one of the most influential times in piano manufacturing: the '90s to the early 2000s. Yamaha, Kawai, Baldwin—all these companies are pulling out of America. They can't afford labor. They're moving to China. They're they're figuring out this idea, and they have a lot of brand sway. Um, these companies that have been around hundreds of years versus a new up-and-comer right. who was struggling but making smart moves, very smart moves. Um, and so Young Chang struggled um, and eventually had to deal with uh, a bankruptcy um, that they they worked their way out of. Um, but even in the early 2000s, Samic, their main competitor out of Korea, was going to buy a controlling interest basically in Young Chang. I think it was like 48%. They were going to buy... And the Korean government stepped in and said, "Whoa, whoa, whoa monopoly! Like you can't right. be the, you, Samic can't be the only manufacturer here." And they stopped that deal, which was a pretty big deal, a pretty big that thing. Was 
big deal for for Korean capitalism. Yeah, so just super dramatic, and that's kind of why the focus of, of this video, I think, is how much drama surrounds the Young Chang name while they're creating a quality instrument underneath it all. Sure. Um, and uh, you see a lot of them on the used market. They play well, they sound great, and they're affordable. Um, and I think they've they've struggled to maintain relevancy. Um, but Pramberger helped, but then he unfortunately passed away, and some of that progress stalled in the early 2000s. Right. So there was all these things that kind of, is it just bad luck? Sometimes bad it, luck it happens. It seemed like it, you know, uh, because around that time, Baldwin started to experience some bad luck. Too. And then Steinway said, hey, we're not going to make the Essex with you anymore. We're going to, you guys are moving out of China. We're going to, we're going to do it with Pearl River. We're going to make sure that they make a good product with, with our Essex brand line. And so all these, the cards were almost stacked against them. Yeah. And, uh, and it's just interesting to, to see that. Um, they still make pianos today. Young Cheng still makes pianos today. They were purchased by Hyundai. Um, and I don't think there's any real ties. To, it's a, it's a, it's a, definitely a different company from Hyundai Motors. Um, but the capitalization has helped them mm -hmm. out the, to, to get recapitalized and to continue to make pianos. And remember, we've, we've looked at replacing a couple of uh, nine-foot Young Changs from studios where the pianos were right at around the 12 to 15 year mark. Mm -hmm. And a lot of times they're looking for not quite a nine foot Yamaha or Kawhi because that studio originally bought that Young Chang because it was an affordable piano and they had a nice nine foot piano mm -hmm. in their studio that played and sounded and recorded great. Yeah. Uh, but after X number of years, the functionality and desirability of that piano in a studio, it's not attracting the mm -hmm. kind of pianist and recording artist that they want. So they have to get a piano worthy of pulling people in. Yeah. And so, and then they, they also manufactured brand names like Weber um, and the Wurlitzer that we had spoken about. Um, but just a very interesting history of Young Chang. And how would you des describe like the sound profile of a Young Chang? There's a whole bunch of them out there. And of course, every piano sounds different. We recommend you guys trying out pianos before buying them. That's always something we recommend. Yeah, particularly uh, because they, they age differently. That is mm -hmm. one thing uh, about... Korean, Asian, all, all pianos that are Japanese, Chinese made is that depending upon the year of manufacture, how old that used mm -hmm. instrument is, it's going to depend upon how that thing ages. Yeah. And there were there was a lot of shifting of materials in the 80s and the 90s uh, in building pianos. Uh, some manufacturers tried new technologically advanced materials, different kind of glues to, and replacing wood components with lesser inferior things. And so for a long time there was that, oh, well that piano has plastic in it. Well, it, almost, I mean the space shuttle has plastic in it. And, yeah. and, and the, the, the one thing is every piano in this day and age has plastic in it because all the keys are made out of plastic. Mm -hmm. there, there's no such thing as you know ivory and, and true ebony getting laid out on a keyboard anymore. Uh, so some of those pianos, they get extremely bright, and sometimes you will get. Um, s one thing I've noticed is that there's, and not all young chains, I mean, it's a, a, any kind of piano, is the hammers will become separated if they use a different type oh, yeah. of the polymer on the glue. Mm -hmm. So you see a lot of times you see the hammers start opening up. A little bit more. Yeah. And so then when they start opening up, well, they're starting to get in the way and they drag, and so the action doesn't work. Yeah, the keys are staying. Yeah. Now, some of the first problems they had were actually funny uh, because w you would open up a piano brand new, and, and I'm not naming any brand, it wasn't Young Chang, but all the keys would be unglued and they curved up in the, in the container. Oof coming over so you had this piano that looked like it needed a uh, you know a pedicure yeah <laughs> and so it was kind of funny with your brand new it's still wrapped up and all the keys are curved off the glues came undone Oof, yeah uh, really? that was in the early 2000s some of the first pianos we were receiving just as trials because yeah. you know you know how these manufacturers are hey look how about if we just send you three or four and uh, you uh, let uh, us know. pay when sold yeah, yeah. Pay, we're just you know they're demos put them in a window let people pond on them see how they age see how they go yeah and I, I think it's it's interesting. That, to that point, there was a whole bunch of obstacles that these manufacturers had to overcome that weren't around before because they were never exporting to the U.S. and they right. were never and so th these were these were things that they always identified. The, the better manufacturers did a better a better job of, of saying, "Hey, we need to really season these pianos for the U.S. market. We need to look at the materials we're using because we're we're seeing these issues down the line." Well, now that was part of the product development with the Halyun line, mm -hmm. and and I know we're talking about Young Chang, but Halyun actually went out and took their part their product to European and U.S. markets to before see what they happened. Said, 
what do you think of this piano? Mm -hmm. And so they took all the criticism and went back and took it to their guy and said, this guy said this, this guy. So they, they changed certain things and they brought in more German components into yeah. that piano. So just super fascinating. Um, the Young Chang line again, uh, a Korean, the second biggest Korean manufacturer of the, of the two big ones, Samick and Young Chang. You'll see them a lot, all over the US market. Um, they were the first one to bring in uh, German engineering outside influence into their design they did. And, and, and their enrollment team. And, and it's and something you see, a piano. you see it now in all those manufacturers as right. they're bringing in influence from the European market. Well, thank you guys for watching. This is Ted Barstow. I'm Patrick Marr with Alamo Music Center. You can find us online at alamomusic.com where we have a chat agent available if you ever have any questions. Again, please leave us comments if you want to see anything different. If you have recommendations for other brands you might want us to go through, I know we're going to bring you guys a lot of content like this. Again, please sign up for notifications. Subscribe to our channels. We have two other ones as well. We really appreciate your support and everything you guys do for us. And thank you for watching.